all right welcome back so finally we are set and ready to create our first machining operation for exercise number four but first we need to create a circular geometry to help uh, contain our tool within it right now we don't have anything to select geometry wise to contain our tool and we need to create one and i'll show you what i mean when i create my operation as well so first come over here to circle and let's create a uh, basically you'll need it the same od as your stock okay or your part but we'll go ahead and keep it as a stock which is the 5.1 so go ahead and type in 5.1 for diameter and hit enter and it will uh, be created for you so now you can snap it onto the point twist your part to the bottom and make sure you snap it onto that bottom edge right there which is the origin go ahead and select apply and okay so there you go that's the only geometry we have created uh, right now after we finished our part place this in isometric view and now we're ready to create our operation so come over here on your toolpath surface high speed and area rough so basically what we're going to be doing is roughing as much material as we can that's usually the first operation you want to take anytime you're machining is roughing getting rid of as much material as as fast as possible so you can get to uh, right away so you can get to uh, finishing passes and getting to the areas that are a little bit harder to get to so for the nc name let's go ahead and call it exercise four and hit enter now we'll ask you to select drive surfaces and all you want to do is come over here under qm surfaces right here at the bottom right and select it and it will select all your part hit enter and now it will tool pass surfaces selection so we have 53 parts that we've selected um, we don't want to be checking anything right now we just want to be containing them within this circle so go ahead and select this now if i don't have a geometry here there's nothing else i can choose to contain it with so go ahead and select the geometry that we just created and select ok select ok to exit out all right so now under the tool we want to use a half an inch bowl end mill all right so let's go ahead and choose that select library tool and if you don't have that filtered already go ahead and search for it by going to filter selecting end mill bowl and selecting half an inch and selecting ok let's go ahead and use the smallest corner radius uh, and select ok so make sure those are all separated by just the corner radius of the part so select the smallest one so we can get as much material out as we can and then select ok under comment go ahead and type in surface high speed area rough all right and then come over here to holder and keep it the same let's go to cut parameters for cut parameters we really want to keep everything the same we want to keep the cutting method as climb we want to keep the tip, tip compensation as the tip of the tool and opti optimize cut order all right step over we want it to be uh, 0.05 you can make it a little bit bigger if you want but the bigger you make it the less material it will machine because it's now that's stepping over every 0.05 there's more material that it can the tool can reach okay you can actually add cuts to the minimum step down and the maximum profile uh, step down uh, you can do corner rounding also depending on certain radiuses that you see that we don't really have right now so we're going to keep those all as off keep tool down within 500 percent you want to keep it at 500 percent and stock to leave in walls we want to leave a uh, 50 thou on the wall and 50 thou on the floor keep it at the same and then the XY step over, every time it steps over, it's 50% of the tool, which is going to be quarter of an inch, minimum and maximum. So the minimum would be uh, 0.1375 and maximum 0.25. Now these look good to me. You're welcome to change any of these values if you like, but they are the default, Mastercam defaults usually uh, get down to the, around the same values that you want to use unless you're doing something uh, uh, very odd with your machining, okay? So rest material uh, and toracoidal motion are, we're not worried about that in this one. We're gonna go straight to tool containment. For the tool containment, we wanna do outside because of the part and how it is. It's gonna be coming from the outside of machining, the outside over here. And so we wanna contain, the com compensate to the outside of the part. And we wanna make sure add offset distance to tool radius, okay? So the offset distance over here, it adds it to the tool radius. So it knows um, how much to machine. So make sure you change this to the outside and go to transition transition we want to keep it at entry helix motion you can do it at profile ramp if you like as well and for the radius we'll do 0.1875 okay so the entry feed rate there's plunge and then there's feed rate plunging will go straight down before it starts machining 
feed rate, it will basically feed into the part from the outside. It finishes the entire path and then feeds again, okay? So these are all things that you, are, you should be very similar, very familiar with from previous uh, exercises in the 2D mill exercise or just basic milling, okay? And steep and shallow, we're gonna keep this unchecked. Let's go to Lincoln parameters. Lincoln parameters, same as before, uh, clearance height, we'll keep it at two. If you wanna be, get it a little bit more faster, we can go back to one. Uh, for vertical retract, like I said before, I usually like to keep it at minimal vertical retract. This way it's not retracting every pass, it's going down and up before it retracts at the final, uh, when it gets out of your uh, final depth, okay? So everything here looks good. Go ahead and select apply and okay. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and there you go, there's your tool path. And go ahead and select verify selected operation. And let's go ahead and run the simulation and see how that looks. So I'm gonna make keep it at the fastest and select play. So there's your part, comes in, your tool. And there's a, re a reason why we have a um, you know bull end mill over here. Uh, this way, basically, the biggest reason is to make sure that it gets into uh, you know all the radiuses of the part. And because of our shape of the part as well, because we have a radius all around our part, if we do a regular end mill, those step downs would be a lot bigger and it would take a lot longer. So this is actually complete. This just roughed out our entire part. Uh, got you know as much material as it could out now if you zoom in over here Don't worry about these little radiuses that it leaves around here when it exits because remember We created the stock a little bit bigger than it needs to be so now uh, We'll come back in and actually clean that up and finish it a little bit better But the main point is it cleaned up the material on the outside here, which is very important part of it It's a lot of material and as much as it could from inside of our part okay so those are, that's the main point of area roughing is to get rid of as much material as fast as possible all right so now that this is done we're uh, completed with this operation and we're ready for the next one